we are done with the discussion about uh, perfect competition and monopoly and we call those perfect structures because the assumptions that we have are very rigid now we're moving to imperfect markets where the models that we'll talk about are more realistic uh, most real world markets are competitive and we will see they are not perfectly competitive because firms in these markets can possess some market power to set their price as monopolies do however that market power is not so strong one such market structure is monopolistic competition which is very close to perfect competition but does not have the same rigidity as perfect competition when it comes to many assumptions so let's talk about monopolistic competition monopolistic competition is a market structure in which the industry is made up of a fairly large number of firms which means that there are many many firms just like perfect competition but uh, the important factor to understand is that these firms are small relative to the size of the industry which means that the action of one firm is also unlikely to have a great effect on any of its competitors so for example if firm a decides to lower the price firm b may not actually be worried about it because the market is still very large and the market share of each firm is very small in other words firms still are acting independently these two assumptions which is the industry is made up of a fairly large number of firms and the fact that each firm is small relative to the market means this is a market structure that has a lot more common with perfect competition however the third assumption which makes it different from perfect competition and therefore results in a downward sloping demand curve is the idea that firms produce slightly differentiated products which means they are not homogenous or identical like perfect competition this also means that a consumer can easily tell one firm's uh, product from another which means that they could be what we call brand loyalty because if we like one product more than the other then we are likely to pay a higher price for that and that means also there will be a relatively inelastic sort of demand curve lastly an important factor to consider is that in this market structure just like perfect competition firms are completely free to enter or leave the industry which means there are no barriers to entry or exit when we see all these assumptions it's very clear that perfect competition and monopolistic competition are very similar where monopolistic competition is different from perfect competition is that firms produce differentiated or non-homogenous goods however these products are slightly different which means there are close substitutes to each other this product's differentiation can result in the the firm to have what we call a downward sloping demand curve which means they have an ability to set the price but because these goods are very close substitutes the demand is relatively elastic and also the fact that there are large number of firms in the market means consumers have a lot of choice a good example of monopolistic competition could be your dry cleaners or hair cutters or even like for example food stores which are many in any neighborhood and therefore it gives a lot of choice for a consumer to choose from in these industries a large number of firms compete selling differentiated products that are heavily sort of advertised and firms come and go under the pressure of competition now let's see monopolistic competition in the short run when we look at monopolistic competition in the short run we need to understand that these are profit maximizers which means that the output will be decided where mc equals to mr so the diagram we will draw will show that there is a downward sloping demand curve although it will be very elastic but the profit maximization will be happening where mc equal to mr because price and mr will be different as you can see this is a downward sloping demand curve which is very elastic and mr is below the demand curve because this is a price setter now when i draw my marginal cost curves the cost curves do not differ uh, due to market structures they remain identical mc equals to mr may happen at for example let's call this q a dash and the price that will be charged will be for example p dash now whether the monopolistic competition firm will make super normal profit or not will depend on the fact where the average total cost is so if the average total cost is below the price which is what i'm drawing here you will have a possibility of a super normal profit 
eve in the short run because now the firm can have a price greater than atc when mc is equal to mr just how much profit the firm will make in the short run however will depend on the strength of the demand and the strength of the demand means number one the position and number two the elasticity of demand what do we mean by that well if the demand is much higher which means further to the right then we can say uh, relative to the average cost the firm can charge a higher price and therefore will make a larger profit similarly the more elastic the demand will be the lower will be the profit or the more inelastic the demand will be the higher will be the willingness to pay and therefore the greater will be the firm's profit so two things will matter number one the high, the position of the demand curve which means if it's high there will be higher profit number two the inelasticity of the demand curve which means the more inelastic the demand curve the higher will be the profit because firms can charge a higher price because consumers are willing to pay much more we can therefore argue that the firm which is facing little competition and whose product is considerably different from that of its rival may be able to earn considerable short run profit when they are under monopolistic competition let's discuss long run in the next video where there could be entry of new firms and that can result in the profitability to be driven down to zero Hey there, if you like what you saw right now, head over to altacademy.org for access to content around six subjects with past papers, videos, revision guides, flashcards, and academic support. All of this is going to make sure that you're completely set for your A-levels. So I'll see you there on the platform.